Hey everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of The Women of Saul. I keep putting a the in the front of it, and I probably shouldn't. Anyways, we're on Cycles of Growth, Day 2, Sleepy Cycle 6. Oh, hello. Yes, Proxus? Hello, Lady Zenda. I am here to give you the Cycles magical news. Keep working. My thanks. Set out over there. The magical news that you're feeling fantastic this cycle? Is Valmir well? He set your newest batch of articles on your desk and backed away. Happy to inform you that he is fine. Just a bit preoccupied helping Lady Zuna with some matters. Jesus, what kind of accent am I even doing? What they are is beyond me. Tell him that I'm still rooting for him. I shall, my lady. Farewell, Lady Zena. Now let's see what we've got here. You picked up the fresh batch of articles and gave them a glance. Huh. This solid transferring article seems interesting. Oh shit, never mind. That's a permanent loss to half your Zala. Seems kind of useless. On to the next article. One of these is bound to get me closer to Mara. I'm coming in! Hey, how are things? Oh, you know, officey. But what's going on? It's rare to see you down my part of the castle. Just thought that I'd let you know that I'm going to try visiting Nozick again. So soon? Yeah, and I know Lady Zuna always forces you to come with me when I go out alone, but please stay here when I do leave. I'm aware it's dangerous, but I don't want to be responsible for your death, you know. I appreciate your sentiment, but will you be alright? Hey, we're in this together now. I'm coming with you. You know, sometimes it feels like you have a death wish. Hell, I knew I should have asked you out beforehand. No, no, we're in this together. I'm very interested. <laughs> Unless you're planning on following my every move and fighting with me the entire way, there's no chance. Thank you, though. Really. Hey. It's alright. I know you must have had a lot to think about when you made your decision. Stay safe. I will. Do the same. Now, which articles should I look into next? Sleepy Cycle 7. That is why it is important you apprentices keep your distance from the Zufo family. If you must correspond with any of them, do all that you reasonably can to ensure civility. You all represent the goodwill of Zaneska, just as they represent Ramestra. It's a shame that they ended up needing to pick up their fool child. Londa must be feeling the humiliation right about now. I guess no one likes her. We should continue this conversation elsewhere. Why hasn't Londa left Zaneska yet? Before Londa could leave, one of her mother's Zagrun riders came and told her that she was to remain here until her family came to retrieve her. Zagruns are terrifyingly fast. Yes, up to three times the speed of commercial flights. Methinks Mother Zufo may be a bit miffed about Londa's little venture. Speculate another time. There's work to be done here. Treat the young apprentice well, and she will leave without an incident. That is all. You're dismissed. Uh, sure. Let's let's talk to her. Speak. Uh, whenever you have a free time, could we perhaps talk? Are you any closer to deciding who the next matriarch is? No, no, no. We won't ask that. What will you do after you step down from being matriarch? What happened to Valamir was wrong, and I'm going to make sure it's corrected. Ooh. Okay. We're, we're fully going in on this. Please bark elsewhere. Actual work needs to be done. You left the office, deciding to grab a bite to eat before doing anything else. Little wonder that I've never heard of such an enchantation. I agree. The costs of reviving yourself are egregious. Most certainly the result of the spell being poorly researched. 
Is it any better than the Zala transferring spell? You've been deep into arcane text as of late. Is something the matter? There will be if I can't find any answers. I'll be taking a break from the research for now, though. I've got other things to do. Wait, what does the Zala transfer do? Half your Zala can be instantly transferred to another host. However, it's permanent, easily knocking away half of your lifespan in the process. Why would anyone concoct such a spell? Seems a bit useless to me. Like the revival nonsense. Xana, did you know that spell works? But you need to carve Vinite in your hand in the form of a symbol? Sounds fake. Continue. Oh, but it gets far better. You see, near the moment of your death, the latent spell activates, and sure enough you revive. With little fanfare, but you do awaken from death's door. However, the host is plagued with nightmares upon nightmares for cycles on end, and you become a weak mess for cycles long after. It's the neat trick for civilians, but in our line of work, where we'd just as likely be killed a second time moments after, I personally wouldn't bother. But why the Vinite? Who knows? But I'd wager that it has something to do with it preventing others from performing the ritual. Pardon? Oh, right. Yes, once the spell concludes, it no longer works for anyone within a million miles of the host that utilized it. Not for twenty years, at least. Oh, come on. Those limitations are bullshit. Yes, the cost of magic without the science to understand it. Still, good find, Zena. The two women started walking past you. Who knows, maybe such a thing would serve you well. But Vinite really hurts if you let it linger like that. Who knows how it'll affect my energy levels going forward. But it's a free revive, I should do it. No, I like knowing that I'll have at least a few hours a day to do things. Yeah, yeah. Alright, it's decided. Time to move on. You ate a light meal and decided to sleep the rest of the cycle away. Thank you. I'll take it from here. Alright, your Zagrun will wait for roughly 20 hours. After that, it will return to Kelil, Kelil Island. Understood. I should return here before then. The guard nodded. May you find what you're looking for here. The guard got on her own Zagrun and left the half-heartedly waving velvet. It wasn't long before she flew out of range of Velvet's voice. Alright, let's finally get some answers. Oh, Valamir. What good timing. Oh, hello, Proxus. What can I do for you? Have you seen Lady Velvet? I wanted to wish her safe travels before she left. Oh, do I detect an interest in Our Lady? Perhaps. She's extremely kind-hearted and means well. A man can't ask for more. Well, I'm sorry to say that Lady Velvet has already left for Nojuk. Oh, bugger. What was her hurry? I still hear the rain. She's seeking answers about her past. Did she perchance tell you why? No, but... Valamir looked out the nearest window. Who wouldn't want to understand the reasons things happen to us? Velvet was walking along the street, not caring about the rain, leaving her drenched. This has never happened before. Why is a single dream able to switch between locations? Velvet sighed and stopped under an abandoned store's roof and looked around. Thirty minutes and nothing. I guess I shouldn't have hoped that answers would come quick. Am I hearing things? Oh, what in the heck? What? The boy was a notable distance from Velvet, but he was there, looking back at her in front of several giant pillars. Come, we mustn't stay here for long. The boy looked in the direction of the voice, past the pillars, and well out of view of Velvet. No, 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 please wait! Jesus. 
I'm getting tired of waiting, Vincent. Like, I get it, boss doesn't want to strike, but it's been so long now that we're overprepared. Hey, she says this stage of the plan will end soon. I don't need to tell you that without her, we don't have a shot at carrying out our mission. Got the eyes on this guy. I don't want to lose you to this fight, alright? So let's just keep listening to her. She knows way more about how to go about this than any of us ever will. <sighs> alright, I guess. I'm just sick of justice being more patience than action. Oh. The young boy was a few yards between two women holding umbrellas, the furthest one standing next to what could only be described as the wondrous beast you recognized as Dragus. Something on your mind, Margaret? Margaret merely nudged her head to indicate the surroundings behind her, bringing everyone else's attention to the pillar Velvet was hiding behind. What's going on here? And what did you do to him? Is he one of those missing kids people are talking about? Who wants to know? Velvet Crux, apprentice matriarch of Zanesca. This one is on our side, Margaret. Then I won't land a finishing blow. Margaret tossed her umbrella away and turned her attention entirely on Velvet. Oh, we're getting another animation. Okay, um, well, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and end this episode here. That was a lot of confusion. Uh, put the, um, confused face in the comments for me, won't you? Anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.